Muthuswami Dikshidhar was a Sanskrit scholar and he brought his scholarship to bear upon his compositions as well. In uh, many of his compositions we can see that scholarship glistening. It is almost as if it is uh, his love for the language for Sanskrit and how he marries that with his love for music. If you find uh, emotional richness in Tyagaraja, we find this uh, linguistic uh, incorporating the, the richness of Sanskrit language into uh, musical compositions. So we find this in Dikshidhar. For instance, Dikshidhar has composed many groups of what is called Vibhakti Kritis. Now Vibhakti, for those of you who are, who are exposed to any bit of Sanskrit, Vibhakti is how nouns are declined in Sanskrit. Um, this is a very basic fundamental grammatical principle. Mm, a noun can uh, take on any case in a sentence or various cases in a sentence. For instance, if I say Rama comes, Rama is uh, the doer, he is in the nominative case. So he is a person who performs the action. So Rama comes. If I say I see Rama, here Rama, the noun is in the position of the object. This is an accusative case and so on. I could uh, say for instance, this is Rama's book, in which case this is what is called genitive. It is Rama's book. So every noun can take on any of eight cases according to Sanskrit grammar. And uh, Dekshidhar has composed many sets of compositions in praise of various deities and uh, he has composed them in all the Vibhaktis. So for instance, uh, taking the God Lord Tyagaraja of the Ruvaru, we have the Tyagaraja Vibhakti Kritis. So uh, he has sung one composition in the nominative case second in the accusative case and so on till eight compositions. Now not only in praise of Tyagaraja, Kamalamba, Nava, Kamalamba Vibhakti Kritis, what is called the Kamalamba Navavaranam, it is an extremely famous set of Kritis. We have Abhyamba, Nava, Abhyamba Kritis, Nilotpalamba Kritis, um, Guru Guha Vibhakti Kritis. Uh, Rama also, Sri Rama and Bhakti Kritis we have. So um, this is something he has, uh, obviously he has taken great uh, pleasure in bringing his Sanskrit scholarship, his love for Sanskrit into his uh, compositional uh, endeavors. So uh, if you take a look at this set of compositions, these are the Guru Guha Vibhakti Kritis. Um, we can see there are eight Kritis here. The first Vibhakti, Sri Nathadi Guru Guho Jayati Jayati. The second is Manasa Guru Guha Rupam Bhajari. This is when it is an object, it is the accusative. Sri Guru Na Palitosmi. This is an instrumental case. Guru Guhaya Bhaktanugrahaya. This is the fourth case. Then Guru Guhad Anyam Najaneham. This is the fifth case. Then Shri Guru Guhasya Dasoham. This is the sixth case. Shri Guru Guhaswamini. This is the seventh. And finally, we have Shri Guru Guhamurte. Chit Shakti Sphurte. This is how these compositions have uh, begin, this set of Vibhakti Kritis. Now this, the first composition in this, in this group, Sri Nathadi Guru Guhu Jayati Jayati. This is, there is, uh, much has been said about this composition. It is believed uh, to have been the first ever composition that Dikshidhar composed and uh, it goes like this. Shri Nathadi 
गुरु गुहा जयति जयति श्रीनाथ दि गुरु गुहा जयति जयति श्री सो दिस इज इन द राग माया माला भगवान विच एज यू ऑल नो इज दी इट्स द फर्स्ट राग दैट अ बिगिन ऑफ द स्टार्ट एंड द आरोह अवरोह इज इनकॉपरेटेड इनटू दिस composition right in the beginning so it's like this hai ga ma shri natha di guru guha padhani sa nirapam gari sa sari ga ma padhani sa nirapam gari shri natha di guru guha jayati jayati shri you have the the first second and the third speeds incorporated into the very first avartana of the composition and uh, um, textually also there are many references to advaita as we will see uh, dikshidar was an advaitan advaita vedanta being one of the um a philosophical metaphysical stance it's it's a, it's a part it's a spiritual path advaita vedanta is not just a metaphysical stance it's also a a spiritual path and um, uh, dikshidar was very much an advaitan and um, in this composition we have many references to advaita we have references to mantra shastra tantra and uh, shri vidya uh, worship also to really appreciate uh, dikshidar's compositions in their fullness one needs to have uh, a knowledge of all these esoteric disciplines but even without them just the the sound of the compositions themselves have a certain grandeur about it can instill uh, an awe in the listener now advaita if we talk of dikshidar's compositions we have to mention advaita and uh, advaita is a, as i said it is a it is a a school of philosophy of meta uh, metaphysics that was first pr- propounded by adi shankaracharya and uh, more than anything it is a spiritual path and uh, many hindus uh, or el- adherents adhere to its tenets um and it's 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 a very complex metaphysic it's, it's a very complex uh, philosophy uh, but uh, it's usually summarized in three lines brahma satyam jagan mithya jeevo brahmaiva na parah that is brahman there is one ultimate it's a, it's a relentless unrelenting monism which says that the ultimate reality is one is a single principle and all that we see we experience all these differences all these uh experience which is grounded on differentiating one self from the not one self this is unreal this is jagan mithya the world is unreal brahman is true jagan mithya the world is unreal jeevo brahmaiva that is every individual soul is brahman so and that is also the purport of the very famous upanishadic statement tattvamasi that brahman is you and there is no difference so it is a it's a highly highly complex and um it's 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 a it's a philosoph- philosophical system that has had many uh, that you have many texts on many proponents of it many uh, people have debated against and for it it's a complex system and um in dikshidar's compositions you have many of many concepts ideas that belong to the advaitic tradition woven into the compositions themselves now if the world is unreal and if the, the ultimate reality is 
a, a single differenceless principle, undifferentiated principle. Then why is it that we experience all this? The Advaitic uh, explanation for this is Maya. So it is Maya, a veil of ignorance that covers the individual soul, which is why it sees so many uh, things as different from it and we experience the world. So Maya again is a, an incredibly complex and interesting concept and Dikshidhar's composition on this is uh, perhaps captures it as best as it can be. The uh, Maya is the veil of ignorance but Maya is also the reason that we are able to worship the Lord because Maya is the reason for the Lord also. Even Ishvara is a creation of Maya. So in this composition, Maya Tvam Yahi. So first Dikshita says Maya Tvam Yahi, go away. And then he says Mampahi. So he says Maya Tvam Yahi. Maam Badhitum Kahi. Why do you disturb me? Maya, you go away. Why do you disturb me? But immediately in the Anupallavi, he says, Dhyaye dhyaye tvamehi mudandehi maam pahi. But you are what I have to meditate on. And now you come, give me joy and protect me. Even the goddess is Maya. So this kind of uh, uh, basic um, uh, paradox that lies at the heart of Advaita, which is captured in the concept of Maya, Dikshidhar uh, sings about it. I will just sing the first line of it. The rest of it, you can hear it rendered on the violin. Maya Tumhi Mabadhi Tumkai Maya Tumhi Mabadhi Tumkai
might say that the complexity of the concept of Maya, the, the intrinsic paradox of Advaita Vedanta is captured magnificently in this small, it's a very small composition. Uh, Maya is the reason for ignorance, so she has to go away for knowledge to arise, which knowledge is liberation according to Advaita Vedanta and yet it is she who is worshipped, she who has to, who is meditated upon and she who is a giver of boons. In the, it's only in the, in the jagan, jagat, which is mithya, that is, which is illusory, the world which is illusory, only in this world is the worshipped and the worshipper real. In the realm of Brahman, ultimate reality, that, that is a differenceless principle. There is no, there is nothing apart from it. As Dikshadar again says in another composition of his, Nirvishesha Chaitanya Rupini. It is the principle, that ultimate principle is of the nature of sheer differenceless consciousness, what we also call Satchidananda. In Advaita Vedanta, a seeker of Brahman, a seeker after liberation, seeks knowledge and he must uh, seek out a guru for that, a teacher who can impart that knowledge to him. But yet, this knowledge is not something that can be imparted. How can you talk about Brahman? As uh, the Kain Upanishad says, one of the uh, ancient Upanishads, the Kain Upanishad, it says that that principle, Brahman, is whence words return. Words cannot reach it, the mind cannot reach it, it cannot attain them. Uh, the word, words of the mind cannot attain Brahman. So, we have the concept of uh, Dakshinamurti, a deity, who is the Guru, who imparts Advaitic learning and he imparts it through silence. Maunam Yakhyana, as it is called. And um, this is Dakshinamurti and Dikshadar has composed a, a grand composition on Dakshinamurti in the Radha Shankara Bharanam. In the Pallavi itself, as you can see, he says, Dakshinamurti Vidalita Dasarti Chidananda Purti Sada Mauna Kirti. So, he is famed for his Mauna Vyakhyana, for his, uh, his um, teaching through silence. The Charanam has many concepts connected with Advaita Vedanta. Nikhila Samshaya Harana Nipunatara Yukte Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Now, this is the state of Brahma realization. When you realize Brahman, that is Nirvikalpa. There is no Vikalpa is uh, distortion or any uh, thing that, for instance, uh, Savikalpa, there is all our experience is Savikalpa. That if you see uh, anything, the consciousness gets distorted, it gets an image, and that is Savikalpa. Nirvikalpa Samadhi is a state of uh, liberation. Nirvikalpa Samadhi. That is one thing. Aparoksha nitya bodha ananda mukte. Again, that is uh, a profound Advaitic concept. That this um, knowledge of Brahman is aparoksha. That is, it is. It is without any mediation. Swagnana nivritti. I think swanu bhoga tripti. That is, you revel in your own or in the joy in yourself, because the, the Brahman is supposed to be of the nature of such chitta and ananda. Joy is the sense of Brahman. So these extremely esoteric concepts, they are all woven very easily into a composition like this. 
that is Nikshadar for you. Nikhil Samshad